Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen, this is HD and I'm coming back with game number two here in this BlizzCon series in the upper bracket between Naniwa and Nesty. Already had a thrilling game in the first one, which was on Shakura's Plateau. One of the things that really caught my eye was the power of plus one mutalisks against stalkers. Now, I've, I've been the kind of Zerg player that never really used mutas against Protoss all that much. Simply because I I think Blink and Guardian Shield is really really good when you know when you combine the Protoss Ground Army and conglomerate it together into that little ball, but Nessie just showed right there that despite all of that, um, you know plus one upgraded Flyer Mutas are really really freaking good, and I don't know if it was Nessie realizing that his plus one upgrade was about to finish or not, but if you guys look back at that game, he pulled his Mutalisks away as the plus one finish uh, upgrade was going to finish, so he kind of timed it really well. Could have been coincidence, could have been complete, utter dominating map awareness um, and build sense, but he, he pulled it off and he, he, he did a great defense. I don't quite agree with him counterattacking on Shakuris, but at the end of the day, a W is a W. So he won the first game. Momentum always a big factor in StarCraft 2. So we'll have to see uh, how things go in this one. I'm very excited. This is a great series. So Nesty is going to be a blue uh, Teal Zerg player at the top of Shakura, uh, of uh, Shattered Temple, and at the bottom, Naniwa is going to be our green Protoss player. He is gearing up for a Forge Fast Expand. Okay. So economy is what he's looking to do here in this one. Also sending a probe out to the top just to check for an Overlord if Nessie had spawned over here. But that's not quite the case. Anyways, guys, um, Hollywood, Halloween is about to come up. And uh, I don't know if I said this before, but Halloween is one of my favorite holidays because I love to stuff myself full of candy because I'm a fat ass. I want to know what you guys think about uh, Halloween. What are you guys going to dress up for, for for Halloween? Post in the comments down below. I'd love to hear what you guys are going to do. I'm going to try to be the one-eyed pirate, but this time I'm going, to, I'm going to do the full gig, not just the eye patch. I want to get like a pirate hat and a parrot, just like walk around. Um, some other one of my friends had a great suggestion for me. They said I should rent out an ice cream truck one day. And uh, oh, oh, hold that thought. We do have a pylon coming down here. Not anyone looks like he wanted to go for a forge. Um, cannon aggression here on the natural, but that is going to be probably held off by these two drones. Anyways, um, one of my friends had a suggestion I should get in an ice cream truck, uh, get on the PA comm system that they have in the ice cream truck. Oh my god, hold that thought. Naniwa really being aggressive with these cannons here, really trying to get it down, but but Nessie so far has had pretty good drone control. Is is Naniwa going to do it again? I don't want to talk about the ice cream truck because he might. Yes, he is going to do it. Wow, and this time he gets the placement down perfectly. The cannon will be inside between those two can uh, pylons and the mineral field. Such a well-placed uh, cannon defense or cannon offense. But Nessie builds two crawlers immediately. And now Naniwa has to face a decision. Does he let these go or not? No, he will not. And immediately, seeing that, Nessie says, Okay, fine, I'll go ahead and cancel. I don't need the crawlers anymore. Pretty high-level stuff here from these two guys. Anyways, <laughs> I was going to tell you guys about my ice cream truck escapades. Uh, my friend said I should get an ice cream truck, get on the PA comm system that they have in the ice cream truck, and do a drive-by broadcast throughout my neighborhood on Halloween, and I can dress up like some kind of an ice cream uh, clown, I guess you could say. Um, I don't know. I thought that was kind of a funny suggestion. What do you guys think? <laughs> um, anyways, uh, getting back to this game, Naniwa, after uh, failing with the cannons, going to go ahead and go back to a Nexus at the Natural. Has a gateway as well. Notice a good placement of buildings at the front just to protect his front door so nothing, no, no shenanigans are going to happen with Nessie, which, like I said before, when you're playing against a player like Nessie, you got to be prepared for sh those shenanigans. Okay, so we have a queen here. Uh, almost looks like he's she's attacking her little kind kindling here, her zerglings, but it's actually hitting the rocks. Rocks are going down right now. Interesting that Nessie deciding to go for the rocks in the back rather than go right for the gold. Um, and I don't know if that's because you know the queen has easy access to get to these rocks, which is going to help take them down a little bit faster than say something like right over here. But I, anytime I'm a zerg player on this map, I almost always go for the gold rocks, you know, first and foremost, because if you think about it. You're going to get your creep spread out here anyways, which you should. So you should have proper defense set up for that gold expansion. But um, Nessie thinking on a different wavelength. So he's going to go ahead and get the uh, expansion in the back, it looks like. And for now, no gas. Wow. No speed, no gas. no Not an ounce of Vespin being mined right now. And this could be problemsome for for, uh, for Nessie because N Naniwa's going right into double Stargate here. Uh-oh. 
Uh oh, you know, Nessie's kind of trying to go for the Spanishua sort of build where you, you get you drone up, you don't get any gas at all until 40 supply, then you drop all your gas down, as you guys can see here. Um, it's a huge delay, but it allows you to get all your drones up and going right away. But if an opponent techs up this quickly, like Naniwa has, into the air, you're gonna have a hard time dealing with this, and I hope that. I hope that Nessie gets some queens. Oh, Zealot is going to run right in here, and it's going to see the entire build face up. That is such an important scouting Zealot right now. It's going to see no gas in the main. Uh, two gases on there. It doesn't see the, the spawning pool kind of trembling its little appendages and all that. So I, I think Naniwa is going to see this, and he's going to realize, you know, there's not that much air defense. He sees the Roachworn and an Evo Chamber, and now he knows the only thing he's got to worry about is basically queens and maybe spore crawlers but there will not be any hydras there will not be any mutas or corruptors and naniwa upon seeing that going to drop the double chrono boost here oh no this could just be a disaster for uh for an st uh who is now spreading his creep i really hope he starts to build a lot of queens he is making two uh spore crawlers as well so that is going to be quite helpful and i don't know he, he saw one stargate so so you know he 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 knows there's going to be some air but he doesn't quite know that it's a double stargate and i i i, I think he could he could be in a lot of trouble we'll just have to see Here comes those two Void Rays making their way out of those two Stargates. Um, joined side by side. They're going to move across to the right side of the map. Uh, Shift Q Rally indicating that they want to go right into the main here. But they're going to be revealed upon a Zergling. That is absolutely huge. Now, Nesty, seeing the two Void Rays side by side, will he be able to gauge that it was a double Stargate or not? It looks like he did, as he's building two Queens and two Crawlers right now. No, sorry, one Queen and, one, and two Crawlers. So it looks like he is ticked off to this, or tipped off to this right now. Maybe a little ticked off too, I don't know. <laughs> so he is going to have to get his defenses up right now. Is he prepared though? There are no phoenixes, but there are two phoenixes in production. And of course the phoenix, as you guys all know, very good at levitating queens and removing them from the game for the, so the void race can take them out. Quite a few queens at the natural, but no creep tumor spread to connect this, which is going to make it a little vulnerable. But Nessie getting a good uh, surround on the Void Rays. He could take these out. Naniwa being very bold here. He needs to get out of there. He's taking some damage. Is he going to lose anything? Not quite. Wow, that was so bold by Naniwa. That was almost borderline insanity because he could have lost the Void Ray very easily to some focus fire from the Queens. But, but that wasn't the case. Naniwa got out of there with most of his Air Force alive. Now, Nessie interestingly building a baneling nest huh i wonder if he's worried about ground forces or if he's preparing to go for some kind of a baneling bus at the front door remains to be seen but he's got to deal with this air force it's getting a little bit bigger here at, at some point this is going to get so big i don't know what he's going to be able to do about it a couple of zerglings making their way into the middle of the map so it does look like he wants to gear up for some kind of a roach ling bling bus at the front door realizing that the ground forces are very limited right now for naniwa who did go for double stargate but the void rays have made their way into the middle of the map and oh mass levitation Guardian Leviosa, biatch! <laughs> Those roaches just got levitated and they just got removed from the game. Sorry guys, Harry Potter reference. I'm a big Harry Potter nerd. But uh, Naniwa coming in with the Phoenixes for round two here. That Phoenix Air Force is getting pretty big. And, and at some point it gets so big that what do you do as a Zerg player? I mean, you can't build Queens one at a time because they'll be levitated. You can't possibly hope to go into uh, Hydralis as they'll be levitated. Really, the only option you've got is to just build mass spore crawlers, get into a super defensive position, and there's really... And it's so hard to come back from something like that. Now, Naniwa also puncturing through the rocks that are leading to the third. Nessie not even uh, realizing this. He's too busy dealing with the uh, Air Force inside his main. The Protoss Royal Air Fleet is destroying. It's carpet bombing the Zerg right now. Everything is getting devastated. Queen's getting levitated up in the air. Spore Crawler's not able to do a damn thing about it. And Naniwa is poised to take this game. He's doing so much damage right now. It's a, it's amazing that Nessie still has the supply to keep pace to pace with Naniwa as it stands. It's amazing that Nessie actually has 80 drones, actually. Oh my god, but he's lost almost all of his queens. Now, there are 11 Corruptors on the way. 11 Corruptors. Count that, guys. But what is the 11 Corruptors going to do about this? What, vomit on them? That's not going to do a damn thing. And it looks like the hatchery at the top left going to go down. Air Forces maybe going to kill off the hatchery in the main as well. Nesty scrambling right now. 
He has absolutely nothing to deal with this. Maybe the Corruptors are going to help out here at the very last second. Will the Corruptors be able to save the Queens? Some kind of a moral victory at all? I mean, he's lost the ha main hatch. He's lost the third hatch. He's trying to fend off everything he can, but I, I fear that he may have overproduced some Corruptors here. And, you know, Corruptors not the best against uh, Zealots. <laughs> Uh, just based on the fact that they can't attack the ground. So, unless Nessie magically techs up to Hive and gets a Broodlord Nest right away, I, I don't see this. Uh, I don't see this faring too well for him. Oh my goodness! Look at the infrastructure of Naniwa. Just a baller in terms of his build order, in terms of his execution of the build. Devastating losses here to Nessie. And 74 drones all mining one base. That is not efficient at all. I mean, I, I think the only thing that's keeping Nessie in this game is the fact that he's got so many drones. So, I mean, if he can hold off this attack, he can theoretically expand and get back in the game. But Naniwa force fielding this position. So, <coughs> excuse me, he can go in the back of the lair and do some real work. Uh, just a really smart placement of the force fields. Now we have drones drilling through. They're trying to mineral walk and drill through. But Nessie deciding to turn around and not do the drone drill. Hmm. I, I actually thought that was his only hope right there. He needs to drill through this stalker army, go around the back, and then release the drill um, to do maximum damage right now. Will he be able to do it? Remains to be seen. There's massive vomits going off the, the corruption ability on the stalkers, but it's just it's just not going to be enough. I, I think Naniwa's just got way too many forces here. This is just so many stalkers, and there's a GG from Nesty. So we have tied up this series here at one apiece. Um, between these two top caliber players, which means we are going to go into a game three, guys, between Naniwa and Nesty. Oh, man. All right, guys. So Complexity Naniwa and Incredible Miracle Nesty going to be facing off in game three following up this matchup. Make sure you guys stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next video. HD signing out.